You've seen GitHub Actions, you're curious and excited about them, but you have no idea where to start. You also want to learn continuous integration and continuous deployment. This video series is the perfect thing for you. Stick around and let's dig into the details. GitHub Actions are awesome. You can use them for simple workflows, you can use them for continuous integration and continuous deployment pipelines, but you can also use them to automate your own coffee machine. They are very powerful and they can do a lot. I've been using GitHub Actions since they were first released. I've accumulated a ton of knowledge using them. And today I'm going to be sharing with you how you can make the best out of this product. This is going to be the first video out of a series of 9 to 12 videos. I'm not really sure about the final number yet. We're going to cover everything starting with an introduction to actions, followed by tutorials for how you can build continuous integration pipelines. Then we're going to jump to talk about continuous deployment and delivery. Then we're going to discuss GitHub Actions and Terraform Cloud to set up your infrastructure as code. Then we're going to jump to discuss GitOps with Argo CD and Flux. After that, we're going to discuss using and scaling self-hosted runners for specialized workflows. We're going to cover application security with GitHub Advanced Security and CodeQL. Then I'm going to show you some of the best practices for designing and writing your own GitHub actions, whether they are JavaScript or Docker-based actions. And finally, we're gonna tackle advanced topics like security and hardening, secrets management, OIDC, and much more. I'm really excited about this series. It's gonna take some time to release all of this content. However, I'm gonna be releasing at the cadence of one video per week. Hopefully by the end of this series, you're going to have a good amount of hands-on experience with GitHub Actions that you can use pretty much anywhere. This is the perfect time to subscribe to this channel to get access to the videos as soon as they are released. In today's video, we're gonna be discussing an overview of GitHub Actions the different components of a workflow as well as the workflow syntax. I'm gonna show you how you can use community actions and I'm gonna show you how you can leverage GitHub's APIs to automate certain activities. Let's get started. So first let us dissect the different components of GitHub actions and let's uh, define the terminology that is used. Everything starts with an event. We have uh, so many uh, different events that can trigger workflow runs. Uh, some examples of those are pull requests. Uh, it could be push to a specific branch that we specify, or it could be uh, events related to issues, whether we create an issue, we close an issue, we edit an issue, we reopen an issue, so on and so forth. Events are tied to workflows and they trigger the workflow runs. And each workflow, we should have at least one job. In this example, we're going to have two jobs, job one and two. Uh, each job is composed of one or multiple steps, step one, two, three for job number one, and step one for job number two. Each step could be either an action or a shell command. And let's not confuse action here with GitHub Actions. Action here refers to the abstraction of a bunch of code that is designed to do something or some activity, right? Now, each uh, job is associated with a runner. Uh, in this case, uh, we will have two runners that can run independently. And the runner is basically a machine or a compute engine or whatever it is. Uh, it could be a laptop or any device that can uh, be tied or connected to GitHub. The runner will uh, establish a long pole session with, uh, with GitHub and it will wait for work. And once uh, a workflow run starts, uh, the activities or the steps are going to be dispatched to the runner for execution. And then the runner will execute the steps in a sequence from top to bottom. Uh, it will start in this case for job number one uh, with step number one and then step number two, then step number three. And for each step, it's going to execute either the action or the shell command and it's going to log the results. It's very important to understand that steps cannot run in parallel and they have to run in sequence from top to bottom. However, jobs, because they consume an independent runner, uh, they can run in parallel. Of course, you can run them in sequence if you deem it necessary, but in general, the default behavior is that they run in parallel. 
The last thing you need to be aware of in terms of runners is that they come in two flavors, either GitHub hosted runners or self hosted runners. For GitHub hosted runners, they come in three types, either Ubuntu runners, Windows runners, or Mac OS. And whenever you design a workflow, you can specify where your steps need to run on which type of runner. Self-hosted runners are, of course, machines that are provisioned, installed, configured, and managed by you. You can decide what operating system you want to have on them, as well as the tools that are available. All right, now let's put that theory into action. Uh, and first of all, we need to start by creating a repository. This is where all the workflows that we create reside. You cannot create a workflow outside a certain repository. This feature does not exist yet. So let's uh, go to our terminal because this is my preferred way. Of course, you can do all of these things in the UI, but I prefer to use the GitHub CLI tool just because, yeah, it's just a personal preference. So first we start by creating a repository. We can say gh uh, repo create, and then we need to specify the owner, which is the organization's name in this case. And then I'm gonna specify the repository name, which I'm gonna call actions hero. Uh, and then I'm going to say that I want this to be a private repository because I don't want to expose this repository to the world. Uh, I'm going to initialize it without a git ignore file. And then I'm going to add a license and I'm going to choose, a, um, let's see, the MIT, basically because it's the most permissive. And then I'm going to say yes to this. Once that is done, it's asking me if I want to clone this repository locally. And I'm going to say yes to that as well. And now that I have a copy of this uh, repository, let's go into it. Um, and the dot get, which means that this is a Git repository. If I go to my browser and refresh the page, I should be able to see here that I have the actions hero repository created. And now I'm going to go into that repository. You will see that I only have the license file as expected. Now, in order for me to create a workflow file, I need to have a dot GitHub folder in this repository. So I'm going to first make the dot GitHub folder, uh, which is obviously a hidden folder, right? I'm going to verify that it's done. And then I'm going to go into this uh, folder. I'm going to create another directory or a folder, and I'm going to call it workflows. And then inside workflows, this is where we will be able to uh, write our first workflow. Now let's clear the screen for clarity, and let's uh, create an empty file. We're going to call it hello world dot yaml then we're gonna open this file for writing first things first we're gonna start by giving this workflow a name and we're gonna call it hello world workflow next we're gonna specify the events that this workflow is triggered on right so first of all we can say whenever we push to the following branches we want this workflow to be triggered whenever we create a pull request on the same branches uh, we want this workflow to be triggered. And lastly, for testing purposes, I usually like to add the workflow dispatch event uh, just because this gives me a button that I can click on uh, in the UI to run uh, this workflow without having to push changes to my uh, repository. Once we do that, we need to we can specify the list of jobs. And um, the first job, I'm going to call it uh, hello. And I'm going to specify which operate which operating system I'm going to be using or which type of runner I'm going to be using to run this job. And once we define that, we can start by defining the different steps that belong to this job. And the first step is going to be the actions checkout action. So here I am utilizing a, an action that has been created by, uh, by GitHub themselves. Right? And here you can also utilize any community action that anyone has created and that is available in the marketplace or as a public repository. And I'll explain this in a bit. So you see here actions forward slash checkout. This really resembles the owner slash repository name uh, syntax that is widely adopted in GitHub. If you copy actions checkout and you go to github.com, and then actions checkout, it will take you to a public repository that contains the source code of the action itself, right? And uh, this is what 
uh, this is how actions work basically whenever you call a community action it will be cloned into the repository and then it will leverage or use this source code uh, to run the action and you can know what happens or how this action is triggered by reading its action.yaml file but I'm not going to go too deep into this because I'm going to have a special video that will show you how you can create your own actions and how you can publish them to the marketplace so that everyone else can actually use them and this is one of the most powerful features of actions right because you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time if someone has already created it. Now, the next part of uh, the uh, uses is the at v2. And v2 is basically the version of the action that we would like to use because obviously there are multiple releases and you have the choice or option to utilize any release that you'd like or you prefer because one might have features that another one does not and the latest might not necessarily always be the uh, the best option for you, right? So V2 here indicates that we are using the version 2 release. And if we go to the releases tab, you should be able to see that we have a V2 uh, release already available in our list. Now, the at is not limited to release names. Uh, it can be any Git reference, right? So it could be a tag. It could also be a specific commit, right? So if you add a commit hash, after the at, you are able to reference or get the source code from that particular commit. Or you can also specify a branch, right? So a branch is also another type of reference for, of Git. And you can say, I want um, at any of this list of uh, available branches, right? Uh, I'm going to demonstrate this at a later point. For now, we're just going to stick to at v2. And then we're going to... Uh, create another step and in this case I'm gonna call this step hello world and I'm not gonna use an action in this case I'm gonna run a shell command and the shell command is gonna be hello world echo hello world sorry and then we're gonna specify which shell we would like to use right as I mentioned previously in the diagram I was drawing you can have multiple jobs inside each action uh, inside each uh, workflow right and um, Let's have another job and let's call this job goodbye. And then we're going to also specify which operating system this will run on. And then we're going to specify one step only in this case. And the actions checkout is not always necessary, right? Because actions is not purely or strictly a CI CD solution. It does the ICD really well, but it's also designed for it to be an automation tool, right? So you can do a lot of different things that do not necessarily require you to check out the content of the repository that the workflow is running on. Uh, and in this case, I'm going to demonstrate this because I just wanted to echo a goodbye world, uh, right? I wanted to run a shell command that does not necessitate or require the source code from this repository. And in this case, I'm going to say goodbye world, and then I'm going to specify the uh, shell command I want to run and then I'm going to specify which shell I want it to run on. Once we're done, we're going to save this file and then we're going to go back to the root or home uh, root directory and then we're going to obviously track these files. Let's do a git status first. That's the logical thing to do. And then we're going to track the file. We're going to commit the changes, add basic workflow. And then once we're done, we're going to push these changes to our main branch upstream. Now, if we switch back to GitHub, you'll be able to see that we have the .github forward slash workflows folders created. And in them, we have the hello world.yaml file um, already uploaded. And the way you can verify the correctness of this file is if we go to the actions tab, and we can see here that we have already a workflow that has been created that is called hello world workflow. And if I click on it, I should be able to see the list of the runs, right? So each workflow, uh, whenever we trigger it, whenever there's an event that comes in, we generate a run and that run runs on a specific uh, runner, right? Um, so here we have already a run that has been completed. Um, I'm gonna go to check what's what happened here and you can see here that I have two jobs we have the first one is called hello we have the second one is called goodbye the hello uh, job ran in three seconds the goodbye job ran in one second the total duration of this entire workflow was 18 seconds and the outcome of both of these jobs was a success 
Now, if we want more details of what has happened, we can click on either one of these uh, jobs, and then we can see the different steps that have been taken uh, to run this uh, particular workflow. The first one is set up a job. This is not something that you can uh, configure yourself. It's something that happens in the background. Um, this is where a runner is assigned to the workflow. The operating system is determined. The environment variables are being added. The actions are being loaded. And then the next step is where we run the actions checkout um, action. This is where we are basically uh, cloning uh, the Beirut actions-hero repository into the runner, right? And then we run the hello world step, which is the first step in our workflow, if you remember, right? And, and if we click on the arrow here to expand it, uh, we can see what uh, shell command ran and what was the outcome of that run, right? And uh, lastly, we have the post-run uh, cleanup work that's being done. Uh, this is also something that you don't configure yourself per se. We're gonna see how we can leverage and utilize those whenever we create our own actions later on. And now let's jump to the goodbye job. Same exact thing, however, this case, we did not need to download an action, which is the actions checkout, right? And we did not need to clone the repository. We simply had to run or wanted to run a shell command that just echoes goodbye world. And this is exactly what has happened here. And that's why if we go to the summary, you will see that the uh, goodbye job ran at uh, probably a third of the time. Uh, one third of the time that it took for the hello job to run because it, this hello job had a little bit more work to do. Now, some interesting uh, UI things you can do, and I'm gonna show you a couple of things also for the GitHub CLI that you can do. First of all, if you would like to download the logs of uh, the run, you can click on this uh, uh, three dots right here, and then you can either see the workflow file, view the workflow runs, create a status badge, or delete all the logs, if that's something that you need to do. Um, otherwise, you can also click on this uh, uh, gear uh, icon here, and then you can download the, either view the raw logs or download the entire archive, and then you can uh, keep a copy of it if that's something that you need. You can also show the timestamps uh, because if you look here, uh, you will see that there are no uh, timestamps, right? Uh, so I can show them here, and then I can see how, how much time it took for each step uh, to run um, and, and when it was actually triggered, right? Um, the next thing I want to show you here is that you can also leverage the search functionality. So if you are looking for something in particular in your workflow or in the logs, you can just simply search for them uh, over here and they will be highlighted for you. Now, if for some reason your workflow fails and uh, the failure is not necessarily a syntax error, or a syntax problem, you can uh, simply click on, uh, go back to the summary and then click on rerun all jobs. Unfortunately, at the moment, there is no feature to run a specific job only, right? If you want to run one job that has failed because they're, they're, it's not necessary that all jobs fail together, right? And you might not also want to run all of the jobs of a given workflow. This is very important whenever you start discussing more complicated scenarios. But for now, this is the feature that's available. I know for a fact that the team is working on another feature to run specific or single jobs, but this is not out yet. So with this button here, you can click on rerun all the jobs. And you can see here, the logs have been cleared, the, job has been, the jobs have been queued, and then we're going to run them one more time. As I mentioned in uh, the first segment of this video, these jobs can run in parallel, right? So they are not ran in a sequence. And as you can see here, the goodbye job finishes before the hello job because it takes a little bit more, a little bit less time. Now, the last cool feature I wanna mention is if you do not want to write your workflows in a text editor and then push them to your repository, you can go back to your repositories uh, .github workflows folder, and then you can create a workflow uh, file here by clicking on add file, create new file, and then you can uh, name it just like we did and give it the YAML extension. And the nice thing is that if you go here and, uh, or if you create a new file, you can also edit existing workflows. Uh, there is a syntax validation uh, feature that is available in the uh, editor on github.com. So for example, if I say here, uh, off will tell me that there is a problem with my workflow. It's missing the root key uh, on. It's very important for us to specify which events uh, we want to run uh, our um, uh, workflow on. 
once you are done, obviously you can either commit directly to the main branch or you can create a pull request. It really depends on your internal workflows and what you are trying to do. If I say here, for example, uh, hello world two, and then I come and I say update, uh, hello job message. I can commit directly the changes to my main branch. And obviously as you, because we have the push on the main branch event added here, you're gonna see that I will have a workflow run that has been triggered by this activity. Here's the goodbye job completed. And here is the hello job now finishing. And if we go to the hello world, we should be able to see now that it says hello world two, which is the second version of our workflow. Now, because I want to make my videos more interesting than the content of the documentation or whatever you can find online, I'm going to show you a little bit now how you can leverage the GitHub API to write a comment on a newly created issue in two ways. One, using a community action, and then the other way is using the APIs directly in our workflow. So first of all, let's go back to our code tab and let's go to the workflows uh, folder and let's create a new workflow. And we're going to call this one issue comment.yaml and we're going to use this time the UI editor to write, to write our workflow. So just like we did before, we need to give this workflow a name, um, create a comment on a newly on new issues. Let's call it that. And then we're going to have to specify the event. Now, this is not going to run whenever we push or create a pull request. In this case, we're going to run this workflow whenever we have an issues and in this case opened event right because we want it to run whenever we open an issue as opposed to whenever we have a pull request sorry i have a typo here it should be types and then we need to specify the different events uh, in an array and in this case i want it to be opened um, and then we're gonna specify the jobs as we did before and i'm gonna create the first job and i'm gonna call it comment and uh, let's say comment with uh action yeah let's do it this way and then we can say runs on ubuntu latest and then we can determine the steps and then in this case we're going to be using a community action to create a comment on that particular issue but before we do that i want to explain a small concept for you which is called context so obviously in order for me to create a comment on an issue i'm going to need the issue id for this newly created issue, right? So how can I get that? I can get it from uh, the um, a context that are passed or the GitHub context that is provided and made available uh, to the runner as part of the workflow run. And in this case, I want to check what's the content of this GitHub context. You can either consult the documentation, but in certain cases, the documentation is not sufficient. So here I'm gonna be dumping the GitHub event uh, payload into the uh, workflow run to see what it contains, right? Because I want to see what's going on there. And in order for me to do that, I need to uh, define this step. We're going to call it dump GitHub context. And then we're going to execute a very simple uh, shell command. I'm going to say here echo. And then I'm going to use the function to JSON. This is not a shell function. This is provided by uh, GitHub Actions, right? And then we have the GitHub.event um, uh, context that I want to dump in this case. And then I want to run JQ uh, because, yeah, we're going to probably get the uh, colorful, uh, properly uh, parsed uh, output. So I want to show you what's, what's contained in the GitHub.event uh, object. Uh, that's why I'm doing it this way. So let's commit the changes first. And then we can go to the issues tab and then also create an issue. Let's call this one uh, X, Y, Z, and then submit it. We go to the actions tab. We should see the X, Y, Z workflow running. Now, if we expand the github.context step, we should be able to see the action, which is open in this case, the enterprise object, which is irrelevant for us, and then the issue object, which contains the uh, uh, information that is most relevant to us in this case. It contains the uh, body of the issue, uh, number of comments, when it was created, uh, the labels, if there are any, uh, and most importantly, the number of this issue. And then we're going to be using this number now to add comments uh, to this particular issue. This is the reference that we're going to be using. So let's go back to our uh, workflow file. And now let's add the step where we're going to be 
which is going to add the comment to this uh, particular issue. And uh, first, uh, as I mentioned, we're going to be using a community action to do this. So I'm going to be uh, using this community action over here. Uh, if you Google it, you'll be able to immediately find it. This is probably one of the most popular ones. Uh, it has 168 stars. And what it does is, it, with using this simple interface, it allows us to create a comment on a particular issue after we pass the number of it. And all you have to do in this case is just to copy this section and customize it, add it to our uh, action, uh, add it to our workflow, and uh, this is it. So um, we're going to be using the version 1. We're not going to change that. Here we're going to replace the issue number with this with the, with the number we get from the GitHub uh, context. We're going to remove the to JSON because we don't need it in this case. We can just say github.event.issue, and we're following the structure of the object, right? So .issue.number, and this should do it. This should be replaced when we run the workflow with the number of the issue that we need. And now we're going to, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to keep this. It doesn't really hurt. And I'm just going to commit the changes. And once we do that, I'm going to go back to the Issues tab. I'm going to create another issue because this event only responds to uh, newly created issues. I'm going to submit it. I'm going to go to the Actions tab. I'm going to click on LOP. And I should have a new comment created on this issue. But first, I want to show you what happens over here. So as usual, the job is being set up. And then we have the dump GitHub context because we did not remove it. Then we ran the, uh, the community action. It worked successfully. It has created a comment on the issue. And it has added the plus one reaction to it. So now we go to the issues list. We go to LOP. And we should be able to see that we have a new comment that came from GitHub Actions. And this is how it's supposed to work. Um, so this is using uh, a community action. Now I'm going to show you how you can do the exact same thing, however, however you using the GitHub APIs directly. So let's go back to our workflow file. And we're going to do the last edit for today. We're going to go to issue comments. We're going to click on the edit button. And now we're going to add another job. And we're going to call this one comment, uh, comment with API. And then we're going to specify the operating system runs on Ubuntu latest. And then we're going to start defining the steps. And we're going to call the first step create comment with API. And then we're going to uh, draft our API call here, right? So um, GHCLI or GitHub CLI comes uh, uh, shipped already on all the runners. So you can immediately utilize that. Uh, and we're going to use it here because it makes our lives so much easier than having to write a uh, curl um, request. Um, it just handles the parameters in a little bit nicer way. And yeah, we don't have to worry about authentication too much. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm making a request to this endpoint. And I'm going to be passing the uh, organization name, uh, repository name, as well as the issue number, I think this is the correct way, uh, as environment variables. And then we're going to add here comments. Don't forget the backslash uh, because we're going to the, we're going, it's a multi-line uh, command. And then we're going to pass the body, which could also be multi-line. And this one is the body of the comment, right? And here we're going to say comment, but from the API call, not action, right? Just to create a distinction. And once we do that, uh, we need to pass a few environment variables. And uh, first one is the GitHub token. This one we need it because uh, otherwise the GH API or the API call with the GitHub CLI will not work. So this is the trick. Uh, for it to work, you just need to create this environment variable, and we're going to be using the secret GitHub token. Now, the GitHub token is a token that is generated that has uh, right per, a set of permissions basically on this repository only. And it is only valid or available for the duration of the run of this workflow uh, and not, uh, not anything else. Uh, so we're going to be using this GitHub token right now to write the comment on the issue. Uh, and then we're going to pass the from the GitHub context, we're going to pass the organization uh, name. And it's available here. If you revise the context, you'll be able to find this 
value and then we're gonna pass the github.event.repository.name and lastly we're gonna pass the issue number just like we did uh, previously now you might ask me why are we passing these environment variables here why we did not have to pass them for the action well that's because the action can tap into the um, a toolkit of github and fetch these values uh, without our intervention so it can fetch the repository name it can fetch the organization name but the issue number uh, they left it open for us uh, to define for um, usability uh, uh, reasons, I believe. Uh, but here, because we are making a call uh, using the API di directly, we have to specify these values ourselves. And I think here we have a problem with indentation. So let's fix that. Done. And I think this should do it. So let's commit and uh, jump to the issues. Create an issue. We're going to call this one last test. And we're going to submit it. We're going to go to the Actions tab, and we're going to see what's going to happen now. So the first job is comment, comment with action. The second job is comment with API. Once these are done, we should be able to see two comments on our issue. And uh, yeah, let's cross fingers that we don't have any um, issues. No, nope. looks like we do. Finally, we have it succeeding in two seconds, and this is it. It has created the comment. If we jump to the issue and we uh, look at it, you should be able to see that we have the comment coming from the API and the comment coming from the action itself. And after this uh, small embarrassment, I think we reached the conclusion of our first video. Uh, I hope you got uh, a lot of information out of it. I know it's pretty dense and I was trying to make it short, but as usual, going on these uh, tangents that I personally believe that are be very beneficial, right? Because I really don't want to cover just the surface. I want to go as deep as possible and share with you as much as I can in terms of information uh, that you might not necessarily find online. If you like this video, now is the perfect time to subscribe so that you get notified whenever I release the new uh, lessons next week and the week after that. And until then, thank you very much for